Welcome to the Idaho Business Podcast, the only Idaho podcast focused on providing profits for Idaho people. If you love our state and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Idaho Business Podcast with your friend, host, and all-around great guy and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Idaho Business Podcast. I hope you guys are having just a fantastic beginning of your week. Because... You should be, you know, you're alive, you're breathing. It's starting to warm up in Idaho. Hopefully, hopefully where you're at, it is, you know, here in Pocatello, the sun's out. So that's always a good, good sign. Um, As always, we're sponsored by Health West. These guys are a great group of individuals and doctors and medical, medical professionals. Give them a Google, find out where their closest clinic is to you and to your family and give them a give them a holler and see what they can do for you and your family uh again uh, couldn't recommend them enough all right last week we talked about uh well we just got done acquiring a new business so now we just finished our first full week of ownership figured you know what let's just continue on with this and uh i hope you guys can learn from our failures our <laughs> our learning experiences slash learning experiences um, and successes. And uh, this week, uh, the first week of ownership, we experienced some things, some good things and some bad things, um, but not necessarily bad things. Like I, I've told my friends and my, my partner, uh, my business partner that um, what would have phased me and really brought me down in like 2022, 2021. Now when stuff happens, like it's okay. You know, it's, I've been there, done that. You know, I, I don't get too high. I don't get too low. And I feel like that is kind of where I want to be. You know, I kind of just have some easy ups and downs. And I, I let myself feel the excitement and feel the wins when they happen. Um, but I don't like, I don't just get hysterical about those type of things, you know, um, in, in the excitement realm. And then when the downs happen, I don't let myself get too down because I know, you know, this too shall pass. And it's not going to just ruin my whole life or my day or my uh, it might it might dampen an hour uh, or a couple hours or maybe even most of the day but it of okay what do i have to do to solve this problem but sometimes we let it, too much of it get into our lives and we're like okay uh now i have to now i have to feel bad for the rest of the week or the month because of, if this happened and you're training yourself to how to respond when when those things and situations happen. Uh, like we've said before over and over again, the many coaches I've had and 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 uh people that have been in my life, you know, we are the author of our own stories. And if we teach ourselves to respond certain ways when certain things happen, then that's exactly how we'll continue to respond and continue to re- to, to react and and so on. So this week, uh this I mean the previous week uh, we were able to meet most of our team. Uh, you know, we had them sign new employment employment agreements because now they're employed by another LLC. Um, just rolled out a few things because when when you're when you're acquiring a new business, they don't know you. They think everyone you you as the owner is going to come in and just change everything, and they're 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 scared. They're worried. You know, especially the leaders of the business. They're worried that you're going to replace them and they're not going to be needed or so on you know the 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 stories that they're telling themselves are are real and they're and they're desperate at that at that time so you've got to help them feel secure in their situation and in their place so that's huge for the, those people that are you're depending on to lead and help uh, lead uh, that organization you got to help them feel secure even before the takeover happens and that's what we were, we were ha- having happen even before the takeover happened so Everything was going well. We were just implementing, you know, a quick hiring uh, strategy so we can keep, um, you know, applicants coming in the doors. Uh, we didn't want to change too much because, like you said, they're weary of change. Any company, I think, is weary of change. And if you have any other experiences, come on the show. Let's talk about it because I'd love to love to know what you've experienced as you've transitioned a new company and acquired a new company. 
Um, but as far as I've been coached and I've been told, you know, you, you change little to nothing at the beginning. So we we put in, you know, some hiring practices quickly. Um, that's that's really going to make their lives easier. And, and the way you pre-frame things is when you're implementing just some some minor things is you tell them, you teach them how it's going to make their lives better. You know, you help them understand how there's a there's a problem currently in the in the in the company and how these things are going to solve them and make their lives better. So if you do it that way, um, I think it's going to go over better instead of saying, hey, we're we're buying this company. Uh, this is garbage and we're changing X, Y and Z. Now they're feeling offended because now you've uh, you've kind of pooped on their on their parade and, and what they've been a, par- a part of for years. So we didn't go in there. We, we went in there uh, with our core values in mind. And like we've said in the past, the same core values that I have uh, that now, you know, be honest, have fun, we uh, work together, make money. Um, those things, those those core values carried into this company. So we, we rolled out those core values. We, we brought out the, uh, the hiring practices and that's it. And we helped them understand, hey, when, when things don't happen, when, when things don't happen, uh, just that, you know, just right in, in the evenings, that's when these organizations go to work. Yeah, these are X, Y, and X, Y, and Z, you know, steps one through nine that you can do to make sure things do happen right. <laughs> Anyways, so that that continued. And then uh, Wednesday went went well. We had our first interviews for applicants. That went well. We hired uh, uh, in the, a couple of individuals. Uh, and then f- when Thursday came and we went to check in with uh, one of one of our lead supervisors there that had been with the company for five plus years before we before we acquired them and this individual we were we were kind of, we were counting on to help lead us and lead the the employees uh, through this transition and to help us and, and grow this company we, we we really saw us uh, having a good relationship going forward couldn't get a hold of her couldn't get a hold of her and towards the end of the day when i needed we needed uh, her to accomplish a few things for us we got this random text that says, hey, yesterday was my last day. Uh, good luck in all your future endeavors, uh, but I'm done. So what do you do in situations like that? Um, you could put yourself in our situation where we just acquired this new business. We're, we're less than a week into ownership. And now the, the main supervisor, the main, you know, you could even call it manager, quit. And... Um, we, we hadn't really, you know, she had the schedule in her head. We hadn't really been able to get that on paper yet. And, you know, there's a lot of um, things that weren't rolled out properly, uh, but it was all put on this this person's shoulders. Uh, and, and little by little, we were, we were getting it out um, in, in more of a systemized form. But she quit before we were able to get all of it. So what do you do? Well, I know we've talked about this in past uh episodes but what do you do when the unexpected happens and you count on this individual to help run your organization you just throw your hands up and you're just like oh crap you know i'm, I'm dead i'm dead in the water i'm crying myself to sleep now i'm just i better close the doors no if you have no systems in place then you probably are you probably you might be dead in the water or you're going to be working so freaking hard yourself to the bone and you'll be driving back and forth you know this company's in Iron falls You'll be driving all over the place to make things work. But let me tell you what we did, you know, and we're not perfect. You know, number one, we didn't respond. We didn't respond with any kind of malice. We, you know, we didn't say, oh, you know, you suck. You know, you, why did you do this to us? You know, this was, you left us in a real bad spot. No, I don't, I don't believe in responding. I don't uh, believe in stooping to people's levels. She knew, you know, that she left us in a lurch. She knew what she did. It's it's neither here nor there. So don't stoop to anyone's level. Just just go forward with a plan. Um, luckily, I've been here before, and and the good thing is, uh, it's within the first week. You know, it would have been worse if it was a month down the road when we had her dialed into our systems of what she was actually doing. Um. Before I get into that, 
part, I want to talk, you know, I, I want to talk about, you know, how we how we got this person quickly replaced. This organization, uh, this company we had, there was there were several other supervisors that we were uh, that we had access to that have been there for years as well. Uh, so within a, within a uh, an hour and a half, you know, of that happening, we had her replaced, the supervisor replaced, uh, her responsibilities covered, and all the shifts that needed to be covered uh, that night were covered. And that was only because you di we, we didn't turn off our brains because, oh, it's crisis, you know, what, you know, the, the, the plane's on fire, we got to run up and down the, the aisle screaming for the top of our lungs. No, we, we took out the checklist. You know, luckily, <laughs> I've got a great business partner and great other managers uh, within uh, my other company that are just fantastic that help uh, with creative ideas and they know the process they know they know the flight plan they know the the uh, emergency plans when things happen so you know when the when the engine's on fire they know hey shut off the fuel step two you know kill the engine step three you know whatever you know they know those type of things so we did that we didn't freak out we had it covered and now going into this new week we have um a few more things to to uh I mean, a few more I's to dot and a few more T's to cross. But before spring break, we leave. And my partner and I are going to leave for spring break with our families. We're going to have a few things more dialed in that it's going to continue to run. You know, is, is, is this new company completely dialed into all of our systems? No. But we know now, okay, we have to implement two or three things more that will make sure that they're they're foolproof enough that um, there's not going to be any bleeding while we're gone. So this brings me into this, the, the topic of the importance of thin slicing tasks when you're, uh, when you're uh, distributing jobs and responsibilities to your staff. Um, never make someone just this jack of all trades. And that's what this supervisor was to the previous owner. Um, he kind of kind of threw everything onto this person uh, towards the last few weeks of his uh, acquisition and said, hey, you are taking care of all of it now. And so she started getting fried at that point. And when we started you know bringing you know her on, you know onboarding her and helping her understand how uh, this this piece and this piece and this piece wasn't going to be on her anymore, and we were going to help her life be easier and get her back to the, the 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 things that she really excelled at and she really enjoyed doing you know to our face she she was acting like hey this is gonna be a great thing we thought this is gonna be good on both sides we were loving on her uh but on the in the on the back side of things you never know you never know it's like a duck that's sitting on the water water and on the top you just see them calmly sitting there but underneath the water you never you, you see their their feet just churning and i think that was what was going on so um good thing yeah we we haven't really we didn't really implement her too much into our plan but when even when you do and you have a manager that or uh, or a supervisor or whoever it is that quits you if you have them thin sliced into your system instead of saying hey you're in charge of onboarding you're in charge of sales you're in charge of uh you're getting people working on on this new con on these new contracts you're in charge of inspections you're in charge of this you're in charge of um customer uh, support you're in charge of you know all this kind of stuff then when that person leaves then you have a handful or multiple handfuls full of tasks that need to be covered and now you're really str str uh, struggling and scrambling to get things uh dialed in whereas if you thin slice things number Number one reason I like this is because people have a very clear vision of what they need to accomplish. Like I have, I have a gal that her main responsibility is the she is her title is director of client happiness, and her main responsibility is the happiness of our clients. And she we have processes of when hey, how to knock the socks off of our customers when and that's and that goes we keep things very positive. So when we mess up because we're not perfect like any custom, company is, we have systems in place of what we do to blow the socks off for customers so we make them whole not just even from where we where we messed up um so she has a kind of a narrow 
view of what she needs to do. And yeah, it has some crossover to some employee responsibilities because, you know, employee uh, responsibilities and re re employee uh, uh, controls and employee performance has goes in hand in hand with uh, in uh, customer uh, happiness within our industry of janitorial. <laughs> so she has a very, uh, you know, tunnel vision of what really needs to happen. Um, but she's also very good at like, Hey, um, she knows, she knows the company in, in a roundabout way that she knows, Hey, HR, uh, you need to be doing this a little better. Hey, um, our office admin, you need to tweak this a little bit or Hey, our scheduler, uh, can you dial this in a little bit more? She understands all the, the, the facets of the company, but she is really focused on these things. And those other people, they're focused on scheduling. They're focused on, you know, the office admin things. And they're, they're focusing on onboarding employees or onboarding clients, whatever it is. Um, they do those things very well because they know what their what their responsibilities are. Uh, and we've we've talked about that in the past of writing things down so they know exactly what responsibilities are. So many people get hired on. They're like, hey, you're the branch manager. You're this. And they have some very vague uh, duties and responsibilities that they're, they're, they're handwritten up, you know, that it looks like it was written by a corporation that it's, you know, that you have to make sure you read between all the lines of all the stuff you need to really do, but make it, make it, you know, legible, help them understand what they're reading, help them understand what is truly important about their positions. So that's what we are doing um, as we roll out into this new company with this new uh, supervisor that we're rolling in, uh, rolling out and helping him understand this is these are your responsibilities for this company, um, X, Y and Z, uh, along with this extra money we're going to be giving you for these responsibilities. So people know there's no guesswork. They know this is what they need to be doing and they know, hey, this this duty has to be done 100 percent of the time like this. That is the that is that has to be clear for you uh it has to be clear for us so things has to be have to be measurable uh, what you what you can measure can be managed um so this is what we've experienced over the past week of owning this company uh i'm going to continue to give you guys updates but um yeah i thought it was going to be you know something worse than it was but uh and i know there's gonna be more people that probably quit because they're they're still worried of new owners but even though you just kind of keep loving on them you just kind of keep loving on them. even though you you know, sometimes you probably get upset and you're like oh you know what no the heck with these people i'm just gonna run my systems and they can stay or they can go honestly change little by little and then you're gonna see hey maybe they have some systems that you don't that you like and then you can adopt so hopefully that can helps hopefully you've learned a few things from our our woes and our trials <laughs> but also saw our successes i feel like we ended on a high uh, for that week but uh we're now going into week two and uh we're gonna we're going to go out swing and so go out and have a great day have a great week be happy be grateful and find opportunities to serve others uh, as always, we're sponsored by my companies, and we're going to sponsor this time by my company we just acquired, Commercial Cleaning Services in Idaho Falls. Give them a holler. Um, give them a Google. Find out uh, what they can do for you, and it's all the janitorial solutions uh, within the Janet within the Idaho Falls area. So give us a, give us a holler uh, at commercialcleaningif.com. You guys have a great day and adios. Congratulations on spending a couple of minutes getting a little bit smarter, having some fun, and supporting the Idaho business community. If you're feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are.